We're so sorry for starting a little bit late. We had a few technical glitches, but I want to see how we can go ahead with the conversation. I was we sort this out. Uh, a very good evening from Dakar. I hope you guys are uh, okay. Those joining us from around the world on the Zoom and platforms, digital platforms of CGD and Africa at least, a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bonjour, and welcome. My name is Maggie Womotesi. I'm a media entrepreneur. I'm also the managing editor for Mansa Media. My hope is that we be able to delve deep into this conversation of recycling SDRs for um, economic transformation in Africa uh, by drawing from the insights and uh, expertise of our uh, eminent panelists that are joining us from uh, different parts of the world. Without further ado, we had uh, our opening remarks from uh, uh, Dauda, but at this point I'd like to introduce our panelists to the audience that is joining online. We have Ms. Hassa Tudio Pesele, she's the Vice President of Finance and Chief Financial Officer at the African Development Bank. Uh, Dr. Rabu Abdu is the Minister of Planning of Niger, who will be with us here in uh, Dakar and might be joining us later on. Uh, Ms. Hastert is with us as well uh, in the room in Dakar, and uh, hopefully she'll be making a presentation later on. We have Phil Stevens, the head of international finance institutions at the Foreign um, Commonwealth and Development Office, and Professor Vinash uh, Pasud, who is the special envoy to the Prime Minister of Barbados. David McNair, the executive director for global policy at the One Campaign, and obviously later we'll be hearing from uh, Matt Plant, a senior policy fellow at the Center for Global Development. Gentlemen and lady, thanks a lot for joining us today. So um, I really want to keep kick off this conversation with uh, looking at the topic at hand, which is recycling SDRs and what opportunities uh, this present to African countries, but also to vulnerable economies. Obviously, there's a lot that has been said in the past, and I want to bring uh, bring you in, um, Ms. Vinash, maybe to help us kick it off. Um, to what extent is it important to have this discussion, and uh, how critical is the time uh, of having the conversation around recycling SDRs, please? I, I think this is a very important time. I think this is a, a moment in which we need to significantly expand the amount we do. And for that, we need new resources. Uh, but countries are constrained um, with the amount of new resources. We, we, we hope uh, uh, countries will, will maximize what they can um, uh, provide for some of the global challenges we're facing. Big global challenges require much greater scale than we have. And so we, we at the Bridgetown Initiative are very much supportive of uh, SDRs being rechanneled uh, to the African Development Bank in particular and others uh, to expand the amount of lending they can do to make sure they can support investments in resilience uh, in many of the, of the member countries uh, of, of, of the ADB. Um, I think that you know, we, we would all, if we had a choice, like paid in capital. Um, uh, but I think that uh, given the what we need, the, the degree to which we need to expand lending, we need to employ all the resources available to us. Uh, and I think the SDRs are certainly one of those. The last issue of SDRs uh, were very much used. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I saw a great piece of work by Mark uh, earlier on, on how much Africa and the Caribbean are using the SDRs. Um, mm -hmm. And allow the African Development Bank to be able to hold them and to be able to use them to expand their lending. Thank you for opening this up. Please bring as uh, the conversation goes on. And um, I mean, there is much that has been said, especially in terms of, um, you know, give, uh, giving, out, giving out these SDRs or recycling the SDRs through the multilateral institutions. And I just want to bring you on on this. Uh, and the one has been around, is this the time? Uh, where where would they you know go uh, to what areas would the 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 money be allocated no. and even uh, questions around uh, uh, you know is is the, are the multilateral institutions um, really 
I just want to bring you into um, uh, Mr. Avinash's, you know, point. Uh, this is what you've you've done extensive research on. I've read a couple of uh, papers around this. Is this the time? I, I think, if anything, it's too late. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the initial allocation, the, the new allocation of SDRs took place in August 2021, so we're well over uh, a year, almost eight months, uh, into trying to use this important resource. As Navinash said, every country got an allocation of SDRs, which we use but sit unused on advanced countries' balance sheets. And the question is, how can we use that and the power of that asset for uh, developing and uh, for vulnerable countries. And I think if this, this is a time of great vulnerability, uh, the COVID crisis uh, posed lots and lots of problems for, for many, uh, many countries around the world, particularly middle, in, middle income countries and low income countries. Just as we were coming out, there was some hope the UK, Ukraine, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine took place, which again, set the global economy into tailspin and it's these vulnerable countries that were most hurt and they need extra assistance and when you see sdr sitting unused on balance sheets of advanced countries you think well gee some other countries could be using this so recycling those from the advanced countries to the developing country really important and i think the multilateral development banks are a good way of doing this the mdbs have a good um uh, good idea of what countries need uh, support, when they need support, how they need support. And so the idea of running through the multilateral development banks is one where the global community comes to our global asset. Let's give these to global banks to in turn help these countries out. Thank you, Mark. I've just been informed uh, we will now go back to the room to have a presentation from the AFDB that is going to be made by Ms. Hassatu Diopisele, the Vice President for the Finance and Chief Financial Officer at the African Development Technical. Could we have that up, please? So as you know, the IMF had its largest allocation in its history in order to respond to, respond to the um, unprecedented pandemic, the COVID-19. And that allocation was, you know, was key, was essential because it helped, it made a difference. It helped stabilize economies, it safeguarded lives and livelihoods throughout the world. Um, the allocation followed the IMF quota with the economic strength of a country. Basically, you know, the needs of the, um, of the, of the various uh, uh, the developing countries. The seven country of the um, of the, the G7 receive about two hundred seventy-seven billion dollars, compared to the uh, low-income um, African countries, which really received a handful. As you can see here from the chart, Africa as a whole received about thirty-four billion dollars, an allocation that is less than the one from Germany, from China, Japan, or the United States. So there has been call from the leading um, and concerned voice across the continent, across the world world for, um, let's say, a more a just allocation. And this call has been heard because the, um, the IMF spearheaded the, uh, the PRGT and the uh, RST, which um, have, um, which are really essential conduits for um, China to, um, to, to developing countries. And there is a third solution, a solution that is complementary to those two, which is one that goes through the uh, through the MDB, the Multilateral Mas Development Bank. Um, channeling um, SDR through MDBs is really a powerful way of magnifying the impact of the um, of the SDRs. So, um, as you know, the uh, the, the of the global finance architecture, they have a unique and powerful financial model that can be uh, that can be leveraged. They are uniquely positioned to address global inequities in a clean and in a sustainable way. So, um, multilateral development banks have the uh, expertise, they have the experience, they have the platform, and they invest effectively, uh, responsibly, and transparent and transparently with full accountability. 
So, um, so this is where this is one of the reasons why we've been looking at the um, at the MDBs as the, one of the, uh, the the conduits for this. So we have developed um, a solution, which is um, for channeling SDRs to MDB to multilateral development banks. And um, on one hand, that solution is has a multiplier effect. So basically, for every dollar of SDR that is allocated to a multilateral development bank that multilateral development bank can generate three to four times that amount. And um, in order to be able to achieve that, we use the, uh, the hybrid capital um, model. And um, what we've done as well is, um, we, we, in order to develop that, we combined the unique you know, financing, um, let's say profile or design of MDBs. And um, in order to be able to, um, to treat a, a loan allocation, let's say, as um, as quasi equity, and in order to ensure that the um, the reserve asset requirements, which is something that the IMF, as a standard setter, but also um, the, uh, the the countries that that um, that um, that are keeping those SDRs, are able to account for them as reserve asset, meaning that they can lend the SDR to a multilateral development bank but still be able to account for it as reserve. So which is kind of a perfect, um, a perfect solution. So if for, 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 the, um, for that to happen, the, the SDR allocation needs to have a reserve asset status. And we've worked on, um, on a solution that basically replicates what has been done uh, for, the, uh, for the PRGT and the, uh, and the RST. We have a very good conversation with the, uh, with the IMF and we're hopeful that in the in the days and, and, and weeks to come, we'll we'll um, we'll have a, a major um, you know positive um, announcement to make. So um, in essence, twenty or even I mean twenty billion dollars of SDRs that is allocated to multilateral development banks is sixty to eighty billion dollars that they can onland. So you know, people have been talking about the one hundred billion you know to developing countries. 25 billion allocated to MDBs is 100 billion to developing countries. And um, we have been uh, partnering with the Inter-American Development Bank and more recently with the Caribbean Development Bank, um, who both of them actually are currently not prescribed holder of SDRs, but I understand that they're going to the IMF board, but they, they, there is a strong, I mean, we're partnering with them for this initiative. Other MDBs have uh, expressed interest and are looking at, you know, how this is going to um, to uh, to develop. So the um, that was what do we do with the SDR? Um, you know, beyond if I look at the African Development Bank, for example, and and I think it's the case for most of the MDBs, we have a social mandate and we have a green mandate for the African Development Bank. Our um, mandate is to combat poverty and improve lives on the African continent. And our strategic objectives is to, um, to, uh, you know, to promote inclusive growth and to help Africa gradually transition to green growth. So um, in order to do that, we have core priority areas, you know, infrastructure development, uh, industrialization, um, but also we have food security, which is one, one part of that. And, um, and climate change is really encompassing. It's what, what we call the cross-cutting area. So climate change, climate adaptation and climate mitigation. I'm not going to go through the story because you know them. The African countries are the least emitters but they are one of the most affected by climate change. And they only have access to a very small portion, I think 3% of climate funds. So an allocation of SDR to MDBs is one way of um, ensuring that there is um, increased financing made available for climate change, but also for food security. And um, the um, one of the other um, elements that we're looking at as well is to resource uh, regional DFI, so African um, financial institutions, uh, development institutions, who are key. I mean, who are key part. Of the uh, of the of, of the um, of the development ecosystem, because you cannot have development at least on the African continent without the private sector, and those regional DFI, be it the likes of African Bank, Trade Development Bank, Bank West African de Development, and so forth, are one of the key links. So we're looking at you know um, uh, showing up their, um, their their strengths either via equity, quasi equity, instruments, line of credits, or, or even 
you know, for those that need that technical um, technical assistance. So in terms of the, um, so, so here this slide shows, you know, some of the uh, key areas that can be looked at by, uh, by MDBs, by the African Development Bank in, uh, in particular. So um, just to go back to the, uh, to the, to the terms so of the, uh, the SDR allocation, the rechanneling, let's say, uh, what is the hybrid capital? Um, what are the terms and options of that solution? It's basically um, the, uh, the, the SDRs that has been received by the, uh, some of the developed countries for them to be able to unlend them to an MDB. And it's, um, it's a perpetual loan, but which can be redeemed after 10 years. And the, it's going to pay an SDR interest rate plus a spread. So basically what it means is that um, the countries when they, um, when, they, um, when they loan or when they own land to an MDB are not going to uh, incur any additional costs, so zero cost to the taxpayers. And in some cases, for those that have expressed an interest in doing so, there's going to be a small spread over what they have to pay to the, uh, to the INF for the allocation already. So basically from that perspective, it is a win-win um, uh, situation. There is what we call as part of the hybrid capital model and optional interest cancellation. I'm not going, going to go through the uh, through all the details, but you know one of the uh, one of the main factor is that the allocation is made to institutions that are highly rated and that have very strong risk management um, and governance uh, internally. So, um, which is why this is a solution that can uh, that can work for all. So, let me stop here. I uh, thank you very much, Miss. Tasa too. Uh, I mean, that's, that was such a wonderful presentation, and uh, we can all agree that there is a huge opportunity with this, just you know, for African countries to bounce back better, obviously, uh, using this money. But institutions like FDB, you know, uh, can become more effective to, uh, you know, implement most of these projects if the SDRs are recycled. And having said that, I want to bring you in, Phil, um, just uh, to add on what Ms. Hasatu has mentioned. You've heard from her in regards to what the FDB can do with recycling uh, SDRs, but also earlier on we had uh, from Mark and uh, Mr. Avinash. Um, how can development uh, institutions like yours, uh, bilateral institutions, really support the recycling process of the SDRs? Great, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Thanks for bringing me in, and um, and thanks for the invitation to participate in this uh, in this event. It's really, really uh, great that this is happening. Um, so, firstly, I just want to say that the UK is really proud that we um, uh, it was part of our G7 presidency uh, in 2021 when the uh, 650 billion uh, SDR allocation was uh, was launched, and then um, also that the 100 billion uh, sort of channeling ambition uh, was first. Um, was first announced in, in Carpus Bay at the G7 uh, Leaders Summit that year. Um, and obviously, as the UK, we've um, already um, announced that we're going to channel uh, of our um, new SDR allocation a billion uh, SDRs to uh, the IMF's PRGT, and another, another 2.5 billion to the uh, to the RST. But we absolutely recognise that beyond those important IMF instruments, uh, that channeling SDRs through the uh, through the MDBs is a really attractive um, and interesting idea as well. And I think that's that's um, for some of the reasons that Mark touched on. Um, you know, around the uh, the mandate of the MDBs is different. They can use them for different types of projects. The, the type of support that the IMF can provide. It's also about the leverage that they can provide as well. Uh, and it's also because we just think the MDBs have really strong systems, sound governance. You know, really good design, really good projects as well. Uh, and as Avinash was saying, there's a huge need for this kind of, this type of financing at the moment. The countries are really facing massive challenges. Um, but it's not um, it's not entirely straightforward. Uh, this is a really novel thing to do. Uh, you know, this, uh, we're, we're sort of entering the territory of the unknown. SDRs aren't just sort of cash; they are, you know, they're reserve assets. It's really important for us as to, as, uh, as partners that um, any SDRs we put into an initiative like this put, uh, retain their reserve asset status, um, and that all, all involves lots of complicated things around the kind of credit risk quality, uh, whether or not the instrument has sufficient liquidity. Um, and it also requires having a pool of donors, at least uh, at least five donors um, uh, in the pool to make sure that we can uh, protect that reserve asset status. And it, it, honestly, as we've been working through this as the UK, it's raised all sorts of financial and legal questions that we've never asked our own systems before. So it's not, it's not straightforward. 
Um, but I think, um, you know, as, as has to be set out, I mean, the, the Africa Bank in particular, working with the other MDBs has been really, really forward leaning in terms of working this through, really creative, uh, coming up with this solution. Um, it's a really important partner for us. We've um, we've also uh, separately from this uh, this discussion, we provided a, a two billion dollar guarantee to the Africa Bank, which is allowing it to lend two billion of extra climate finance over the next couple of years. Uh, and I think this initiative could you know could potentially really really build off that as well. So we you know we really hope the IMF will um, uh, will determine that um, uh, and, and come to its board to explain that uh, the proposal does meet the criteria for reserve asset status. I think that could really help um, other partners to, uh, to potentially contribute because that is ultimately, you know, te technical challenges aside, of which there are still uh, some that we need to work through. Um, you know, ultimately, what will determine how quickly we can get this initiative off the ground and, and whether it happens uh, will depend on, on on whether we can get those sort of uh, uh, five partners together to be able to to make this happen. But I think, as, as Mark said, the benefits of making this work are really huge. As Avinash said. This could be a model, you know, if the Africa Bank can maybe do it first, which, you know, which makes sense because the Africa Bank is very capital constrained. It could become a model for other MDBs, which could be really transformative. And so I think the prize is worth, you know, is really worth um, fighting for. And that's why we're, uh, as UK, we're, we're really practically exploring uh, with the Africa Bank how, um, how we could make this work. Thanks. Thanks, David. I uh, rather feel, and I wanted to push you a little bit because earlier when I heard you say, you know, it's, it's very important and critical that you know, this money is spent in certain areas of projects. Is this something you would love to elaborate on more? Are there certain key areas that are of interest, especially for organizations like yours? Well, you know, I think when I think about the um, the African Development Bank uh, in particular, it's, you know, it's got huge comparative large infrastructure projects, I think particularly kind of climate finance, both for adaptation and for mitigation. And in fact, the um, the $2 billion guarantee we did is, is it's all for climate finance uh, with, with at least half for adaptation projects. You know, it's going to do things like supporting the just energy transition in South Africa, um, you know, uh, but, but I think we recognize the banks, you know, beyond that project financing, the bank does also have a really important role in providing Fiscal support through crises as well, and, and you know, and this, these um, uh, using SDRs as hybrid capital to boost the bank's financing capability could also sort of allow it to potentially sort of stretch and then more to um, you know, in the form of budget support to help countries as well. And we think that's also also really important. Thanks. Thank you. I want to bring you in, uh, David, just to top up on that. Obviously, uh, with the work that you're doing with uh, one campaign which is committed to improving lives and livelihoods of uh, people across across the world. Uh, to what extent uh, the SDR is really supposed to support you uh, what, in terms of benefiting some of your projects? Thanks, Maggie. And um, It's a well-known saying that you should save for a rainy day. And if we look at around the world at the moment, yeah. it's raining. You know, we need these resources. We have them sitting unused. Uh, we need to free those funds to help countries respond to the climate crisis, to COVID, the demographic trends, food insecurity. We need a lot more capital on longer terms and better rates. And mm. SDRs are a kind of innovative mechanism of, of doing that. Um, so that's why we got involved in the SDR uh, issue uh, almost two years ago, um, you know, when COVID hit, uh, initially making the case for the general allocation, then pushing for the 100 billion recycling target then making commitments for countries to pledge towards that. And what we learned is that there's almost this like cat and mouse game between political decision makers and kind of technical experts. So the technical experts are kind of saying, well, we need a political signal in order to move. And then the political people are saying, well, we need technical answers to these questions before we can move. Um, and so we've spent quite a lot of time kind of trying to bring those things together and you know, following the process in real time as issues kind of are flagged up if there is a, a decision maker who doesn't understand the issue uh, or doesn't agree with the issue, how can we kind of educate them on the importance of the issue? How can we, you know, we commissioned legal analysis, we've done economic analysis to try and yeah. help kind of smooth and kind of grease the wheels a little bit. Um, and I think we're now in a situation where we've got uh, about $60 billion worth of commitments and not one SDR has been recycled. And that's a pretty strike, striking thing. Uh, you know, there's 8.4 billion SDRs in the IMF's uh, Poverty mm -hmm. Reduction Growth mm -hmm. Trust. There's 29 in the Resilience and Sustainability Trust. Uh, so we need to think much more about how we can move that, you know, those resources faster. And I think what we've been talking about today with recycling to the MDBs, um, as, as others have mentioned, 
there's not just the kind of flexibility element to this. There's also the leverage. So for every dollar you put in, you get three to four out, which is not the case with the IMF um, facilities. So I think we need to do three things, really. We need to kind of work in coalition to articulate the needs clearly and identify you know, how we can support countries in applying you know, for these resources um, you know, to improve health and, and, and food security and climate and so on. And part of that, I think, is involving more of the communities that are involved in those issues and helping them, helping educate them on why, you know, such a kind of esoteric thing like SDRs can matter and can lock so many resources. And um, the second is, you know, as we've talked about, you know, you know, addressing the kind of technical constraints to recycling SDRs to MDBs. Uh, and we've had a lot of back and forth, particularly with the Europeans and the European Central Bank around the definition of reserve asset characteristic. Uh, and I think what I hope will happen with you know, with the excellent proposal that the AFDB have put together is that we'll get an opinion from the IMF and that will allow us, you know, through kind of expert legal analysis and through advocacy to unlock those resources. But then the final piece, I think, which is really important is accountability for how these resources are being used. It was really kind of striking. There was almost a kind of cognitive dissonance for me whenever we were doing so much work on unlock unlocking these new resources. And at the same time, I was watching news of protests in Kenya, yeah, where protesters were begging the IMF not to lend more money <laughs> to the government because they were worried about how these resources will be used. And I think what's striking about this is, you know, it's not aid. They, these are kind of loans on a very, you know, very good terms. Mm. But ultimately, the payers of these loans will be the next generation of people living in low and middle income countries. So I think there's a part there that we really need to kind of you know play in terms of tracking the resources, making sure that they're going to the right places and so on. And that you know ultimately we will kind of create a, you know an incentive and, and further makes the case for more resources to be to be allocated. But I think the main point that I wanted to like land is you know we, we say we should save for a rainy day. It's raining, we've got these resources and we should use them. Um, uh, absolutely, and thanks a lot, uh, David. I think you make a very valid point, and it, 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 I mean, it's a question of uh, accountability and to to what extent can that actually be effective and help countries uh, in the development process. And again, I want to bring you uh, back in, Mark. Like I mentioned earlier, that you know, I'll keep bringing you back and forth because I know you've done extensive work in this field and worked with governments uh, and different organizations in in terms of policy. What are their, their views uh, on this proposal of recycling the SERs through MDBs? And can they actually be put to their best use to improve development effectiveness? I think, I think government views are mixed. Um, yeah. As several people have said, the, these SDRs are assets of the central bank, and they're on central bank balance sheets mostly for rainy days. And the question is, when when is when is it raining hard enough to use them? And central bankers are always hesitant to dip into their reserves. As David has said and others said, this is a rainy day, and it's, it's not a rainy day that's just today. It's not just the COVID crisis or the impact of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. There's a transformation that needs to take place of the global economy to a lower carbon base. We need to tackle climate change. We need to tackle the problem of pandemics. There are global public goods that need to be dealt with. This isn't going to happen overnight. So we have to find the kinds of capital to, to make the investment needed that's patient. And I think there's a general agreement that we need that kind of capital. Then you say, where is it going to come from? And governments go, oh, sorry, times are tough at home. We don't have that money. Mm. Well, ultimately, it's going to cost money. And so I think the SDRs represent an opportunity to tap into global reserves in a gentle way. The SDI, global reserves amount to about $14 trillion. The kinds of recycling we're talking about, $100, million, $100 billion, is small. It's a small part of the global reserve pool. If that can be put to good use, and we're not saying, the, 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 the great thing about the AFDB proposal is they're not spending the SDRs. They're using the SDRs as capital, to leverage resources for private markets and lend those resources. So you're using the SDRs to tap into the power of private markets in order to get this transformation to happen. 
And the MD, the, 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 the genius of the African Development Bank and the other MDBs is they can be patient at the capital. They don't have that need that the private market has for quick return. Mm. And so it's a nice way of transforming a, a, a government asset into a powerful tool to help these countries. So that's the, that's the case we need to, to make. But lots of countries, again, are very hesitant. They say, ah, these are our reserves. Why am I going to give my reserves away at this point? And so that's the conversation that we really need to have. Avinash, I see you're so much in agreement with Mark. Do you want to add on his thoughts? Well, most definitely. And you know, yeah. one of the things that is, is different over the past decade has been quantitative easing. You know, we used to tell our students that you can't uh, do quantitative easing. This will destabilize the world. And, and clearly there is a limit to how much you can do it and when you can do it. But for a handful of countries, they were able to use this tool of quantitative easing to provide liquidity when they needed it. Many, many countries could not use that tool. And the countries that had that tool available to them are the same countries that are not using their SDRs. And they frankly don't actually need them as much because they have these other tools. Um, and I, I think that uh, helping them to um, uh, use part of them, no one's saying they should use all of them, but ha helping them to rechannel some of those to these uh, MDBs with their solid credit ratings, their, their governance structures, um, their clear investment plans, I think makes a tremendous amount of, uh, 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 a tremendous amount of good sense. Um, and, and as Mark said, we probably have just shy of a trillion dollars of SDRs. Mm. Um, we have 12 or fourteen trillion dollars of reserve. Um, Mark and uh, and a mutual friend Ted Truman has has argued that maybe we need to to start doing an annual issuance of a small amount of SDR. So not the kind of large issuance we had the other day, six hundred fifty billion US dollars odd, but a small amount of issuance. And I think that once we start the rechanneling, uh, we and we we find that it's working well. Uh, that we're managing yeah. to expand the lending, then we should even think about going that further step of a small annual issuance uh, of SDRs. Absolutely. And uh, just to add, I want to bring in Ms. Hasta too. She's with me in the room, but has been in agreement mostly as you were speaking. So uh, in regards to, and again, Mark, I think this is a conversation that is not ongoing. This is not the first we're having. We're going to have as many uh, with different deliberations and obviously dialogues and debates around releasing these and recycling these three MDBs. I want to bring in Ms. Hasta to, uh, to give her remarks. Thank you very much, Maggie. So, um, yeah, I mean, I cannot agree more. I really like that idea of um, annual small issuance of SDR. Uh, yes, it is true that SDRs cannot, they cannot replace a capital increase, a general capital increase for a multilateral development bank, but it's a very nice way of supplementing the resources that, that we have. If I take the case for Africa, I mean, the, uh, the challenges have been growing. Uh, you know, we used to talk only about the infrastructure gap, I mean, that, uh, poverty, et cetera. 100 billion plus uh, around 100 billion uh, deficit per year. There is the climate commitments, and I think that those climate commitments were around 100 billion per year. They have not materialized. So all of these are, are, are growing, and we're not seeing the resources in uh, there. But here, what MDBs are saying is not we are not asking necessarily for a general capital increase, which is um, basically uh, some kind of a donation, but give us a loan, and we will put that money to use. And we will return that money back to you, and it's going to be at no cost to uh, to your taxpayer. So, um, which is why we we really found it's been uh, it's been more than a year that we've been uh, I think about two years that we've been working on this. But it's it's um, to us it was essential to bring MDBs to the full just because of the role uh, that they have and the uh, you know the solution that we can bring to the table and help make a difference. The solution for, for, for Africa's development, for the world's development is not going to lie only with MDBs. Everybody will have to be part of that story. And um, you know, and, and Mark, you were talking about the uh, you know the capital markets, the uh, how we leverage will let the through our solution we're leveraging capital markets. It's also a way of bringing in, in a certain way the private sector into that solution because it's the resources that we take from the private sector that are going to go into, uh, into development. 
Uh, thank you uh, very much, Ms. Asatu. And obviously, Maggie. I think uh, what's very interesting for me is when you mentioned the private sector, uh, a lot of times, uh, especially in Africa, um, one of the things that we keep uh, uh, saying every other day is how do we the, get the private sector on board in terms of helping and financing uh, some of the projects uh, across the African continent. I want to bring you I don't know if it's Mark, uh, I don't know who to bring in, but if somebody can help me address this, it would really be nice. To what extent uh, could we use the SDRs to incentive, uh, incentivize the private sector uh, financing in Africa? Well, let me just quickly say- uh, Maggie, Avinash, that... you, I think you're on mute. Would you like to unmute? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear hey. you. Sorry, I can hear Great. If I could just briefly uh, say that, you know, you, you may have come across the Bridgetown Initiative, uh, which is one of the key planks of that, is how do we mobilize private sector savings, especially into some of the uh, large developing countries uh, for their transformations, energy, transport, and, and agriculture. Um, the, there is private savings looking for good investment returns, but the cost of capital uh, is is ex extraordinarily high in many developing countries. And that cost of capital often relates to macro risks, things like currency risk, uh, which is very hard for the private sector to, to insure against. It's hard for the individual projects to insure against. So we think that we could use SDRs as a way of helping to lower the cost of capital. Uh, and if we can do that, we can get the private uh, sector investing in projects. So they would invest in other countries, but where the cost of capital is really inhibiting them from doing so. Because we do need to find all, all kinds of ways to, to in, in, increase our leverage. The world probably needs four to five trillion dollars of investment in the energy, transport, and agriculture transformation. Uh, the MDBs lend 80 billion, <laughs> so uh, there's there's a li limit to how much the MDBs can do. We need to we need to look at leverage. So some SDRs in a in a climate mitigation trust to lower the cost of capital, uh, blended with the private sector savings, may be a way in which we could get more money into some some of the jet peas, for example, that Phil's working on, uh, uh, and other uh, useful transformational projects. Thank you very much. I, don't want to I just want to check in if we have any questions from the audience. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, uh, David, would, would you like to weigh in? Thanks, Maggie. I think, I think the, the issue of, of cost of capital, which Avinash has mentioned, is so critical to the energy transition. The International Energy Agency put together a cost of capital observatory um, and it basically looked at, you know, if you want to set up, for example, a solar farm in the US, in 2020, you would have paid a 1% interest rate on that. If you wanted to set up a solar farm in Nigeria in 2020, you would have paid 14%, which just makes these things just not economically viable. And I think, you know, there's a lot of kind of discussion on the international stage about, okay, we need an energy transition. We need countries to, you know, stop, you know, mining fossil fuels and, and so on. But unless we address this cost of capital issue, we're not going to solve that at the speed that we need to. And SDRs provide us with long-term finance at a low cost of capital. So I think there are, there are just so many reasons why this makes a huge amount of sense. But somehow the lack of political attention and the institutional inertia means that it's not moving as fast as we need it to. Uh, and we need to change that. I'm glad we have FDB with us today. I want to bring in Ms. Hassett, but before I go to her, Avinash, I have to say that um, uh, for the African continent, it's very important that we draw lessons from the Caribbean. Oftentimes, even when I am thinking in terms of Africa, I'm just thinking, you know, we have the same challenges. When we talk about climate change, equally when we're going through the devastation of the floods, uh, all of these, it's, it's the same challenges, but being able to draw from that experience is, is very key. And I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that we have you on the panel and could you know draw especially uh from from some how how the caribbean or barbados in particular uh is is addressing uh, this miss hasha so would you like to come in now yeah okay thank you very much and actually look basically providing uh private sector investors with the necessary confidence to invest in africa has been one of the key focus of the african development bank because 
you know, uh, uh, as you rightly indicated, a major deterrent to uh, carousel flows into the continent has been the, you know, the high risk perception, which results either in a lack of interest or, you know, inexplicably high cost of funding as indicated by David. So, um, you know, infrastructure and um, uh, finance and trade finance are still being seen as intensive, intensive exposed to a wide spectrum of risk, FX risk, and so forth. But the troubling aspect of that is that uh, Africa is also ironically known and verified by factual data to have the lowest default rates on infrastructure projects in the world, lower than Europe, lower than the uh, Americas, lower than, um, than other parts of the world. So um, I think I have the numbers. I think the default rates for Africa over the 83 to 2017 was 5.5% and the Latin America was 12.9, Asia 8.8, Eastern Europe 8.6, North America 7.6 and Western Europe 5.9. So the uh, there is that perception and that we have to deal with on a regular basis. This is why we, the African Development Bank and other MDBs as well, have the necessary tools in order to accompany those investors by a uh, you know a wide array of de-risking de instruments. So it goes beyond the SDR, it's just part of the um, the, the mandate and how do we bring in the private sector into um, you know into into development because you know as I've mentioned indicated the amount that we provide is rather limited and it was a, it was that exact realization that you cannot achieve development only via the private sector the the public sector which led the African Development Bank to open I mean to change its business model and uh, and and do also private sector lending. And obviously, which uh, brings in other development institutions, multilateral institutions um, into the context. And I think at this time, I would like to uh, invite Phil Stevens to weigh in on, uh, especially on how to support the private sector uh, on the African continent uh, in recycling these SDRs or what role they could actually play. Yeah, look, I think it's a, it's a really important question, how we mobilize more and more private investment for the African continent and, and also other uh, um, countries around, around the world as well. It's clearly, you know, as Avanash said, we need a huge amount of investment and um, the public sector is clearly not going to be able to, to do it all. I, th I think, I mean, I think there is, you know, um, there is a question about the SDRs and kind of, you know, the, the proposal that has to be made earlier, you know, that could expand the Africa Bank's financing capacity. The Africa Bank invests in, you know, in the private sector as well as, uh, providing sovereign lending so there's kind of there's a sort of a direct link there um but i think i'd also just say you know that, um sdrs are not the only instrument around for for doing this sort of thing and um you know we've got lots of other interesting in instruments out there uh, you know the the guarantee that i mentioned earlier the two billion dollar guarantee that we've um partnership we've got with the um african development bank the room to run guarantee that's actually it's a 1.6 billion dollar guarantee from the uk government but also with a $400 million guarantee, um, has to correct me if I get the numbers wrong, uh, provided by the UK sort of private insurance industry, basically, uh, taking first loss on that on that guarantee with the UK government standing behind it on the next 1.6 billion. And that's a really brilliant structure. It works really well in terms of our own um, risk management, you know, as, as UK government, but it's also a brilliant way of sort of mobilizing um, the private, you know, private reinsurance industry and getting the uh, exposure into into Africa and other other MDBs were, were well aware of have reinsured you know quite large portfolios of their their private sector investment allowing them to then reinvest that money as well so I think that's that's a really interesting um, area we've we've innovated in the UK we've got a project called Mobilist uh, which some of you might have heard of which is um, basically uh, piloting new listed products uh, because we recognise that's actually where a lot of the big uh, institutional investors that we talk about a lot are going to first come into uh, to investing. Uh, so it's uh, in, in developing markets. So um, it's piloted new listed listed products, which have are basically constructed from underlying portfolios of investments in uh, in developing countries uh, that wouldn't normally kind of access the sort of uh, the resources that would come uh, flow from those big international institutional investors. And we've provided a bit of risk capital or technical assistance as UK government to get those products. Uh, off the ground and, and we've had some fantastic success um, moving some of those products forward as well and I think there's there's some some ideas kind of growing from that around you know big sort of warehousing facilities that the MDBs could put together and other sorts of instruments that, that I think would really like to explore uh, both with the African Development Bank but also other other MDBs over the over the coming years uh, so I think I think SDRs are you know they're part of the solution but I think there are all sorts of other uh, really important instruments out there as well that we can use to try try to do that. Thanks. And, and if I may, what I really liked about the transaction that we did together is the fact that 
you know, for the first time we had we had a, a, an agency, but we also have an entity from the private sector guaranteeing a sovereign loan portfolio. And um, I mean, that really made a difference. Uh, you know, there is all those discussions because as a MDB, we uh, the, we uh, we provide loan at very affordable cost. They are not the typical commercial rates, but here we were able to uh, you know to guarantee something, um, a, a sovereign portfolio, which was I think a first by the by the private sector. And I hope that this is one of uh, of many um, of others to uh, many other uh, such transactions to do, or you know just going into uh, into innovation. When your resources constrained, you have to innovate. Thank you uh, very much, Hasatu. Um, it's, it's, it's become really exciting and interesting, but I know we have very limited time and we're six panelists and we have closing remarks. So at this particular moment, I just wanna give each one of you maybe a minute as we get to the close of the session, you know, on, on perspectives from some of the deliberations we've had. Uh, what is that one thing you could do, especially in your organization that would make a difference in implementation of the G20? 20 SDR recycling pledge. I'll start with you, Mark. So let's go back and talk about that pledge. The pledge is for $100 billion uh, worth of, or $100 billion worth of SDR recycling. We've got pledges of about only 60 billion and none of that has made its way to a developing country yet. So first of all, we've got to get the pledges up. Yeah. And I think the African Development Bank proposal shows an alternative to the IMF, it shows a way that those SDRs can be really used. And my hope is that as we move this forward, countries will say, ah, there's an alternative to, S to lending through the IMF. And so pushing this alternative forward, I think is, is really important to do in the next few months. We don't have a lot of time left. I've not sure I'd like to bring you in. You know, we, we talked a bit about how we need to bring in the private sector, partly to get up to the right scale we need um, because of the enormous uh, financing needs. Uh, and that's very important. And we may need new structures backed by SDRs to help us provide the focus and speed we need to, to work with the private sector on some of these transformational uh, projects. But the reason why the Africa, proposed, Africa Bank proposal is so important is there are many things the private sector can't do. There's a lot they can do and they're essential, but there's a lot of climate resilience, economic resilience, development resilience. And resilience, of course, isn't just about buildings. It's about communities being resilient, institutions being resilient. And they often don't have revenue streams for the private sector to, take, to, to really take advantage. So we need, we need Af the African Development Bank. We need the Africa Bank, we need uh, multilateral development banks to play a traditional development bank role. And for that, um, expanding their lending, SDRs are important. As Phil said, it's not just SDRs, it's a whole panoply of, of, of tools. There's hybrid capital, there's callable capital, SDRs, because we need to expand, you know, the G20 uh, recommendation on the capital adequacy framework, mm -hmm. we strongly support that recommendation. We want it to go forward. And it's about a range of things because we need to unfortunately increase the MDB lending, not by 10%, 20%, but 200%. And so SDRs are important, but not the only tool for that. Uh, thank you very much. And I want to bring in uh, Ms. Hasatu. Obviously, even with the FDB recycling, the SDRs comes, you know, there are multiple challenges that are probably uh, around in terms of the, the implementation. But the opportunity is huge, especially in terms of accelerating, you know, some of the projects and development in the countries that, that the bank operates in. Um, I'll, I'll just give you the floor in the closing remarks. One, of, one key thing for your organization that to move this, you know, fast and quicker. <laughs> Okay, one thing that I can um, that that I would like to so first of all, I'm very I'm I'm very pleased with the uh, with the level of dialogue and partnership that we've had with the Inter American Development Bank and also with the Caribbean Development Bank, but but most of all with the you know entities like the uh, that the CGDEV, the CSOs, and you know and and countries like the UK and others 
who have been quite supportive and they have made a difference. And actually you see that, you know, if you have a coalition around you, you can only go further ahead and you can only win. So, um, you know, development is not something that is going to be resolved in one day. It's not something that is going to be resolved by the G7 countries of others. It needs everybody to sit at the table, uh, look at the goal, look at, uh, you know, the, the objectives and see how best to get to that objective. And uh, that has been one of the one of the, one, of the, one of the main lessons. And you know, with regards to the African Development Bank, you know, we've been uh, we quite uh, you know the innovations that were put through by the um, expert panel by the G20. These are the things that we've been working on. I mean, Harvard Capital um, has been approved by the board of directors, which is why we decided to use that when we saw the SDR allocation. We thought that was a perfect solution. And uh, you know, global capital, we are looking at to see. I mean, how do we enhance global capital? We have those global capital that is weighted single B, et cetera. How do we enhance that? So we have many, many projects, limited resources, but uh, you know, it's, um, you know, we need to look at the, the, the goalposts and it's, you know, how to, uh, how to improve lives. Many projects, limited resources, but a massive potential with SDRs. Phil, Steve, I really want to bring you in with some closing remarks. Yeah, no, thanks. I mean, I think I totally agree with uh, other panelists earlier that said uh, it's raining and when it's raining, we've got to innovate. And um, as, as Avinash just said, you know, there's, there's loads of great innovative ideas out there of how we can stretch balance sheets and, and do more um, with what's already out there. You know, all the G20 CAF review recommendations, we should totally look at those. Um, SDRs are not the only answer, but I think they can be a really important part of the, the solution. They're, really, they're a really creative way uh, of trying to provide additional finance. Um, you know, I don't want to give anyone the impression that the, we think the IMF uh, facilities are not really important. They are. And that's why we're channeling, you know, quite a lot of our UK SDRs to those. But it's also really uh, interesting to see um, this this proposal that the, uh, the Africa Bank have made. Uh, and, you know, I think we're really, really excited about exploring it further and working through these remaining technical issues and looking at whether there's ways to bring uh, other partners on board to, to try and make it happen. So, so look forward to continuing that discussion with, with Hastu, Hastu and her team, who are, I think, probably among the MDBs, probably the most uh, innovative uh, uh, CFO uh, team that I've, that I've come across, uh, really driving forward a lot of innovations. Uh, we look forward to con continuing the discussions with them over the, over the coming months. Thanks. So it's awesome to hear a uh, continuation of conversations that go beyond the rooms uh, and uh, really awesome to see that. Hopefully we, we have many of these dialogues that lead us to uh, proper, uh, you know, uh, um, projects that happen across Africa. David, I want to bring you in. You've been very vocal about implementation and accountability, but also some skepticism when it comes to governments and institutions. Um, I would like to give you the floor uh, in, in the minute to, to give us your thoughts. Thanks, Maggie. Well, as Mark said, you know, we, it's been more than a year since the 100 billion target was set. There have been 60 billion of pledges. There was 80 billion of pledges, but Congress did fail to appropriate 20 billion. Um, in terms of SDRs that have actually arrived in countries, the number is zero. So I think we should be very aware of that. And we need to kind of push for speeding that up, both through the IMF facilities, but also through this um, FDB facility. Um, and I think there's something really important about, you know, we shouldn't forget the political economy of a lot of this. And there is stigma associated with a country going to the IMF for resources that that does not apply with with multilateral development banks like the FDB. So I think there's there's a huge number of reasons why this makes a huge amount of sense. Um, but ultimately, you know, the world is not bereft of good ideas. The world is bereft of the political capital to implement them. And I think the big thing that we need to do is to kind of get better at articulating why the needs are in increasing so dramatically and why we have these solutions and why it's an absolute no brainer that that decision makers should be kind of pushing this through at speed. Thank you very much, David. Thank you so much, panelists, for your thoughts, uh, for your insights. It's really been um, exciting at this point in time. I want to bring in Dauda Semben, the CEO of Africa List, who just uh, with us in the room now. Uh, I'll ask Dauda to unmute and give us some closing remarks. Well, thank you very much, uh, Maggie. I've been following these a lot of interest, the uh, very insightful comment and discussion that were made. Um, if I were to actually try to get uh, uh, to, do, to derive some key takeaways, I would say first that actually there is a strong consensus on the 
importance of uh, SDR recycling and making sure that actually those SDRs get um, to the in the hands of the MDBs, uh, particularly the AFDB. And talking about the AFDB, I think I certainly uh, sense that all of the um, the panelists were also very much appreciative of the uh, quality of the proposal that um, uh, uh, Hatatu made uh, at the beginning of uh, this uh, this panel. So I think this is uh, very much reassuring, and it was also very heartening to hear from Hatatu that uh, uh, there are some progress actually being uh, noted in their discussion with uh, the IMF. So we look forward to more progress and. Uh, decisive progress being made on that front. Um, I certainly also agree with what uh, some of the panelists said. Mark actually indicated uh, the areas where SDR recycling could be um, helpful, uh, whether it's uh, to tackle pandemics or whether it's to tackle climate change. I would add actually one other thing, actually taking into perspective the situation where we are. So uh, Maggie and Hasatu and I are right now in the building one uh, block away from a um, conference center where over 40 countries are gathering today, including more than 20 head of states, talking about food security and food resilience in Africa. That's certainly, and actually that event is hosted by AF, the African Development Bank itself and the government of Senegal. What it says is very much important. When we were in the room this morning, listening to the head of states talking about why they all came to this summit, they talked a lot about how almost we have all what we need to um, ensure food security in Africa, whether it's the technology, whether it's the resources, whether it's the land, the water and everything. One thing that we are missing is adequate financing. And that financing, I think, uh, would be actually very much needed if uh, we could find some innovative way to mobilize more resources for AFDB, which is very much committed to uh, making sure that it actually sort of mobilize resources for African countries to uh, improve their food system and their agricultural system. So certainly, SDR recycling is a very is key among those potential um, uh, sources of financing that uh, uh, MDBs like I AFDB would need to help actually uh, address uh, this, uh, uh, the food security needs in Africa. It was estimated that every day more than 250 million Africans goes to bed hungry. So if we are able to use the source of innovative financing like the SDRs uh, and make sure that it actually sort of benefit uh, uh, MDBs like IFDB, certainly we can actually address that type of um, um, very sad realities that uh, some of uh, the developing countries are living through, including in our continent here. So this is a very much timely and important event. So we are very much delighted to have been able to co-host it with the Center for Global Development. And we are very much also honored to have been able to have the participation of, uh, of a high level and a very uh, distinguished panelists. So I just want to thank you once again for having taken the time to be with us today. Um, Hasatu, thank Thank you very much, Abhinash, thank you, uh, Phil and uh, David, we were very much delighted. And of course, uh, my uh, CGD colleague Mark has been also uh, wonderful. So thank you all of you. And uh, we certainly, like uh, Maggie was saying earlier, uh, this is something hopefully that will be actually a series of events that we will be co-hosting, hopefully, and making sure that it's uh, uh, help uh, address these critical issues. So once again, thank you very much to all of you. And thanks, Maggie, for uh, the wonderful moderating. And we look forward to continue to discuss with you these important topics. Thank you and have a good day. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Thank you. so much.